Hi everyone. Frederick Henry K. F. Chapman's impact on Swedish shipbuilding and naval architecture is arguably unmatched by any other individual. Born in 1721 at Nyavarvet in Gothenburg to English immigrant parents, Chapman's entire life revolved around ships and shipbuilding. He pursued his career at shipyards in Sweden and abroad, gaining expertise in mathematics and physics in both his home country and England. While he is best remembered for his contributions to the Swedish naval fleet and his theoretical work, Chapman also applied his skills at civilian yards such as Bangsvarv in Gothenburg and Jorgardsvarvet in Stockholm. Chapman played a pivotal role in the development of Sveborg, a fortified naval base off Helsinki, and he introduced innovative vessel designs tailored for operations in the archipelagos along the Swedish and Finnish coasts. At the age of 60, he assumed leadership of the Swedish naval dockyard in Karlskrona, where he not only oversaw vessel design but also restructured the entire shipbuilding process. Within just three years, the yard managed to produce an impressive 20 new vessels, including 10 ships of the line and 10 frigates. Chapman's profound interest in the theoretical aspects of naval architecture and his ambition to elevate shipbuilding from a craft to a science drove him to produce numerous treatises and publications. Among these, Architectura Navalis Mercatoria stands out as the most renowned internationally. Architectura Navalis Mercatoria In 1765, Chapman took a leave of absence from his role as the chief naval architect for the archipelago fleet stationed at Sveborg to dedicate two years to Architectura Navalis Mercatoria. This volume of drawings, published in 1768, showcased what Chapman considered the finest and most intriguing vessels of his time. The museum holds several original copies of the book, along with the original copper plates used for printing the illustrations. The book comprises 62 copper engravings illustrating vessels and watercraft from Sweden and various other nations. While some were Chapman's own designs, many were vessels or types that had captured his interest during his career. The book encompassed a wide range of watercraft, from warships to cargo boats and small fishing vessels. From its inception, the publication was intended for an international audience, with the table of contents available in Swedish, French, and English. The scale of each drawing was also presented in Swedish, French, and British feet. Throughout the 20th century, new editions and facsimile copies were published in Sweden, Britain, Germany, and France. However, the book remains a rarity, and those seeking to access it may encounter challenges in locating a library that possesses a copy. Hence, we take great pleasure in providing the book's content here for free. Although the illustrated section of the book was meant to be immediately followed by descriptive and explanatory text, various factors led to a seven-year delay before the text was finally published. Chapman's Parabola Method Upon meticulous examination of ship drawings known for their exceptional sailing qualities, Chapman discerned a specific framework division pattern. He recognized that the frames should decrease progressively from the widest point, following a relation akin to the ordinates 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., where the curve ABC forms a parabola, with AD representing the axis and A serving as the vertex. This technique came to be known as the parabola method. Although Chapman also introduced the relaxation method, he personally favored the former. During his tenure at Sveborg, Chapman oversaw and directed the development of naval facilities, which encompassed cranes, docks, and various structures. In 1764, he relocated to Stockholm but retained his role in designing vessels for the archipelago fleet. Additionally, he became part of a commission tasked with proposing enhancements for the expansion of the high seas navy. The commission's final report, 
presented in 1764, recommended new designs for standardized ships of the line ranging from 50 to 70 guns. This report epitomized the principles of a burgeoning school of shipwrights who championed scientific methods and the utilization of theoretical models throughout the ship design process, a viewpoint at odds with the traditional approach that favored gradual evolution based on practical experimentation. The traditionalists, notably represented by Gilbert Sheldon, clashed with the proponents of new ideas but ultimately lost the debate. At the Riksdag in March 1769, the Board of the Admiralty endorsed the Commission's findings and entrusted Chapman with the task of designing the Navy's new warships. Ships and Boats for the Archipelago Fleet It is often said that around 50 vessels were built at Djurgårdsvarvet for the Archipelago Fleet during Chapman's time. This is where his ideas about a lighter archipelago warfare, featuring gun sloops and cannon yawls as crucial components, came to life. These small, nimble vessels could maneuver between larger enemy ships and are considered to have played a decisive role in the Battle of Svensk Sun in 1790. Another significant type among Chapman's designs was the archipelago frigates. These hybrids of sail and rowing vessels were constructed to navigate through challenging archipelago waters. With their firepower, they supported the smaller sloops and yawls. The four types of archipelago vessels designed by Chapman were named after Finnish landscapes, Turuma, Pojama, Hemama, and Udima. The Turuma vessel Lodbrok was launched at Djurgårdsvarvet in 1771 and participated in Gustav III's Russian War from 1788 to 1790. The Maritime Museum holds a contemporary 116 scale model, a drawing, and a wax figure depicting the figurehead. Merchant Vessels Throughout his long life, A. F. Chapman held a deep fascination for all kinds of boats and ships, whether warships, merchant vessels, or utility boats. During wartime, all types of floating craft were pressed into service, so the boundaries could be fluid. The so-called product placard, a regulation stipulating that foreign goods arriving in Sweden could only be transported on Swedish ships or ships from the country of origin greatly promoted Swedish merchant shipping. Many shipyards sprang up along the coasts of the Swedish realm, and expertise grew. In this context, architect Irinavolis Mercatoria played a crucial role by disseminating knowledge of shipbuilding. After the publication of the portfolio, A. F. Chapman designed additional vessel types that were not represented therein. These included many merchant ships like water carriers, flower carriers, horse transport vessels, grain and hay carriers, as well as timber transport vessels. It is also believed that sloops, schooners, and galleys that sailed on Lake Vonnen, Lake Vatten, and in the Oland and Finnish archipelagos had their origins in Chapman's designs. At Djurgards Varvit, Chapman also drew East India men, which were subsequently built there. His older brother Charles served as a captain in the merchant fleet, working as a mate and captain on East India men, among other roles. The East India man Kron Prince Gustav made no fewer than seven voyages to China between 1769 and 1790. Chapman signed the drawing in Stockholm on October 10, 1762. When the ship's chaplain Jacob Wallenberg made his journey to China on board the East India Man Finland, which he wrote about in the classic book Min Sun Por Gael Jan, My Son on the Galley, the voyage coincided with that of the Chapman designed Kron Prince Gustav. While the Finland rolled like a mighty tuna prost, Wallenberg recounts, the other ship moved swift as a secretary and soon disappeared from sight. The older Finland arrived in Java nine weeks later than the Kron Prince Gustav. Royal Pleasure Craft 
In the 1770s, A. F. Chapman was commissioned to design pleasure boats for the king. Both the schooner Rig Damphian and the sloop Vassorden were built at Jorgard's Varvit, and beautifully colored drawings of them are preserved in the Maritime Museum's archives. On drawing 1974 to 1031, depicting the Vassorden, there is an interesting text where we can read, Drawing of the Royal Sloop Vassorden, built in 1774 at Jurgard's Wharf at in Stockholm by Master Shipbuilder and Knight A. F. Chapman. Drawn in 1775 by Joachim Endeff. The Sloop Vassorden itself was destroyed in a fire at the Galavavit in Stockholm in 1921. Thanks in large part to the preserved contemporary drawings, a replica could soon be built. The drawing for the Amphion lacks a signature but was either executed by Chapman himself or by New Endeff. In either case, it depicts Chapman's design for an elegant pleasure vessel for use on Lake Maleron. At its core, it was an archipelago vessel of the Turuma type, modified to suit the royal patron's needs. The drawing was well received and approved by Gustav III on August 24, 1777. The following year, Amphion left Jurgard's Varvit and was used for excursions from Drottningholm Palace. During the war with Russia from 1788 to 1790, Amphion served as the king's flagship. The vessel, notorious for its poor sailing qualities and rumored to have earned the nickname the Gilded Wooden Shoe, sustained damage and was reportedly close to capture by the Russians but narrowly survived the war. After Gustav III's death in 1792, Amphion fell into disuse. In the 1820s, she was brought back into service, but this time as accommodation and hospital ship for the Navy. In 1873, Amphion was decommissioned for the last time and eventually dismantled a decade later. The stern, along with the elegantly furnished cabin and figurehead, was preserved. The remnants of Amphion found a permanent home in the Maritime Museum at its opening in 1938 and have since been a valuable starting point for exhibitions and educational programs. In fact, there are two complete watercraft of Chapman's design preserved in the collections of the Maritime Museum. They are two smaller sloops intended for leisure trips on Brunsviken Lake in Stockholm near Hager Palace. At the museum, they have always been known as Galton and Delphinen, the boar and the dolphin.
Thanks for watching.